Hi, and welcome to episode 41 of Air Rapid Trail Talk. I'm Jam. I'm Jubes. Welcome to the show. Schwang. Hey guys, welcome back to another week. Look at that, we're two weeks in a row now. Look, I know, we are look on at, a roll. What? This is freaking awesome. We've done it. So this episode is going to be focused on the Havilene 100, which is coming up very quickly. In a as month. in just a month. I don't even know how it's the end of September. I love it. But um, we are, uh, this is the Havilene Hype Show, we're calling it. So we are going to be talking about some of what's coming across the board in the next month. Some stuff that's going down with this race. And... Uh, We've got this year's race shirt on, actually. We are, we are rocking this thing. And uh, we have some other exciting announcements. So yeah. where do we start? Well, let's start with our title sponsor. All right. Havilene 100 presented by... Hoka! Oh. One, one. oh, I'm also... I have the shoe box You have the well. box. You're fancier. <laughs> um, yeah, they still spell it with an H. I don't know why, but it kind of fits pretty well with the whole J and H play so uh anyways we want to thank hoka for coming on board uh as our title sponsor for the Havilene 100 for this year and for next year yeah. and we're pretty excited about this partnership uh right here we have the speed goat twos uh we'll be rocking these race weekend and uh how many of you guys out there that are running are going to be wearing hokas we want to we want to hear from you i want to know um so we are we guess we could probably keep these off to the side um just right there perfect um, yeah, we're super excited. They're going to be doing a lot of really fun things this year to boost up, I think, just the overall excitement of the event, yeah. which we're really excited for. Yep. And that not only spans race day, but it also is spilling over into packet pickup, yep. which we're excited about because it's at a new location this year. Yes. Uh, if you have come to Havilene 100 in the past, maybe a long time ago, everything used to be at the park. We kind of outgrew that model. We moved to the host hotel at the Wicopa Resort. We've kind of outgrown, outgrown that, that slash we want to go in a little bit different direction, a, mm -hmm. a little bit better style. So we're moving it to. So we're actually moving it to a wonderful place at Fort McDowell called La Puesta del Sol. Um, and it is so beautiful. It's a whole giant venue that's very southwestern themed. Um, and it's it's all open, so it's everything is open air. Um, the whole packet pickup is going to be kind of on the inside, but then we have like a whole car courtyard. We have an open, not an open bar. We have a bar area. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's so so beautiful. I'll actually put maybe a picture of La Puesta behind us. Yeah, maybe yeah. we're there right we're, now. Maybe we're there now. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so brand new location. It's just going to be bigger. It's going to invite you know people to come and stay. Um, We're moving to an all day thing as and well. And it's all so day, so not just like a couple hours of packet pickup. Starting it's at ten a.m. Ten a.m. Come out. We're going to have uh, food available there. Yep. So there's we going have, to be drinks. Yep. Go ahead. So we do. So it's from ten a.m. to six p.m. Um, is the available packet pickup. Um, most of the day uh, we'll have two catering food trucks for lunch um, from like t 11 to 2 um, and then from 3 to 7 I believe we have another food truck coming. Um, we have Hoka inspired drinks like cocktails. Yes we do. We yes. have we have Hoka inspired drinks and we're also going to have from Huss Brewing which is a local brewery here in the Phoenix area. Yep. They're going to be making a special Hoppy Havelina IPA that we are going to brew and actually we're kind of launching, this is like the Havilena hype month. We're yeah. going to be producing some videos. They're going to be going more in depth of all this cool stuff. All so the things that we're going to offer, yeah. We are going to be filming us helping to brew the beer. Yep. That's going to take place, I think, in a week and a half. Yep. We are going to go to Puesta del Sol, and there's so many cool activities to do there. There's horseback riding. There's You can ride these off-road golf go-karts, uh, all kinds of other cool stuff. We're going to taste yep. the drinks. Yep. So we're going to show you what that is involved, and this is all kind of getting everyone hyped up for Havelina being just one month out. This is our biggest, most premier event. This is 
the first event that we ever put on as a company. And we are just excited to put on a phenomenal event for everyone and have just a hoot and good time. <laughs> and we wanted to start on that that Friday. I mean, like before, but like just invite everybody to the expo. And even if people experience. aren't running even the if race, running if you're it. just a local runner yep. and you want to just come out and meet some Hoka athletes and do a group run and ride a horse <laughs> and drink a Chasing Walmsley, yep. you can come and do that. And we're also going to be having, we're putting together our own film festival that night yep. uh, that is going to be super exciting, featuring... Uh, some Hoka films and some of their athletes as well as some of our own stuff. So look forward to that. It's going to be a really great time. Uh, and then the weekend itself, we've just, we're really dialing everything in right now. So uh, super excited for everyone to come out. Yep. What else do we want to talk about with, uh, with that stuff? If not, also, we want to open this up to questions as well. So if you guys are tuning in live right now to either Instagram or Facebook, which we have both going right now, Feel free to ask anything you want about Havilene 100 or beyond, uh, but also in the comments as well, we will be looking at those. Yeah. Do you have any way to look up, when we get to the Q&A section of this show, we'll look up maybe last week, see if we got any comments on the last week's show as well. Yeah. Uh, and we sure. are coming to you guys again with the show every single week. We want to pick a topic, but we love the Q&A format. It's really the bread and butter of this show. Mm -hmm. We want you to help guide where we, where we go with this thing. Other things to look forward to, I think, the week of Havelina is that Hoppy Havelina IPA will be tapped at Huss Brewing, both in both in Tempe and Phoenix. Yep. So I think on Wednesday, on Wednesday. they're going to tap those, like they'll be available by draft, and it will also be canned yeah. and available not only at the expo on Friday, but also at the event, at the event itself. And there uh, are major like beer garden sponsors, so they will be there um, within the concession area. Um, yeah, go and buy up that ha Hoppy Havelina. Yeah, because it will only be available that week, basically, essentially. So, yep. um, and so a couple things going into that beer, which we'll go more into when we go brew it. But they're gonna they're gonna put some orange peel in it, because across from the park is these giant orchards. If you've seen them, mm -hmm. if you've seen them across the way yeah, yeah. At, at like Fort McDowell, so there's like these giant orchards right across the street from the start finish line. They're gonna be putting some of that in there, uh, some agave, and I think some sage. So it's kind of like desert inspired. Uh, citrus is a huge thing here in Arizona. So yeah. really, it should be fun. They are super stoked. So we've got Hus, we've got Hoka, we got Havelina, all these J's and H's, and dang, the hype is real. <laughs> Be a lot of fun. Horses. Horses. I don't even know what else. Uh, know. Anyways, uh, what else were we going to talk about? Um, we've kind of gone into it a little bit. Some other changes. We were actually as far just. As the actual event, yeah. We were just looking at it today. We, we're probably going to change up the start finish a little bit. Yep. Just the way you run in and out, which is really exciting. Just to make it more efficient and more like accessible for the athletes. To, um, I mean, we we want to keep. Like the crew and the pacing tents and the pop ups and like still create that energy all the way through the camp um, at the headquarters. The one thing so, I noticed last year yeah. was just that it felt a little disconnected between the finish line and the aid station. So we're trying to mix it up a little bit so it feels a little more cohesive. And I yeah. think we figured it out. It's going to be really a good time. So the start finish is going to be more yeah. electric and more exciting. And uh, and then we want to also touch on the ice issue because we know that was uh, something that was a little lacking last year. We, we ran out a few times at some of our aid stations. Yep. We were like massively pumping up the ice. We've got a, literally a truck of ice at one of our aid stations. We've got multiple huge thousands of pound trailers that are parked right at our main aid station. Yep. And uh, ice will be very plentiful this year, no matter the temperature. Thousands of pounds of ice. I think we'll probably have 20, 20 to, to 25,000 25, pounds of ice to like start. on site when the starting gun goes off, yep. which is a m many multiples of what we had last time around. So yep. ice should not be an issue at all. Um, feel free to use that to cool yourself down. Um, so just uh, we definitely are listening and working on that, and uh, we just want you guys to know that. Things to look forward to. Super excited about the expo. Uh, super excited about everything else. So yeah, um, we've got more videos and maybe you know. Yeah, we really want to put together some. Uh, there's going to be some fun videos coming out over the course of the next month to really get things going. Uh, we are going to do an official race director briefing, yes. which is not this show. It will be 
kind of going through our participant guide and go through in a video everything. format, yes. essentially. And that will be both Jubilee and I. Um, Haley, I don't know if she's, she'll probably, I don't know if she'll be in the video, okay. but um, but you guys are kind of taking the lead on the coordination of the entire event. I mean, it's, it's a team effort on, on all of our parts. Yes. It just kind of takes everyone. Yeah. So, um, yes. We've got some special surprises um, in terms of their... I don't want to announce who will be here, but there will be Hoka athletes yep. working the aid stations. At the aid stations. So elite athletes that are Hoka sponsored will be helping you guys out there, which is really, really cool. It's really exciting. I'm super stoked for that. I'm excited. Um, and at some point, too, we'll probably go over the top athletes and stuff that are running this year. Oh, yeah. We've got some Ultra Trail World Tour athletes coming in. We've got some top ranked athletes, and we'll kind of... Maybe we'll do that tied in with uh, part of our Havelina hype. Maybe we'll do a uh, a rundown of the favorites. And maybe we'll talk about some speculation on the awards and the costumes and see who might be in the running for those. Yeah. So that could be fun. Uh, anyways, I think, should we move into some Q&A? Yeah. I'm sure we have some. So again, if you guys are tuning in right now, I know there's not a whole lot of you. It's kind of a weird time in the afternoon. But feel free to ask those questions. Just drop them down in those comments right below. And we uh, will get to your questions right now. Let's go. To, we're gonna do some questions from last week's show. That was episode forty. Yep. So, and again, if you guys have questions or um, you didn't make this show, just type them in the the comment box, whatever below, and we'll get them to the next show. Um, Danny Pimiento, Pimiento. Yep. Um, says you guys rock. I made the jump. I'm doing my first ultra trail race in April. Um, starting with uh, the North Face Challenge 50K. Um, and then I said, if you have any questions, and he said, actually, uh, honestly, I have a ton of questions like how to bridge my training from my marathon in October and then when the 50K training starts. Um, he's found several 50K training plans but doesn't know which one to go with. Um, and maybe some more questions coming from Danny, but... I mean, if you're um, jumping up from a marathon to a 50K, there's yeah. not a whole lot of difference, honestly. Yeah. Um, if you're going a road marathon versus a trail 50K, you're going to be out there longer. And I would say the number one thing to do is throw the whole concept of running pace out the window. It doesn't really matter for a trail running race. Uh, it's not really applicable. And feel free to walk the flats and the ups even. Mm -hmm. Like... That's the number one thing I think I can suggest to people that are that are switching over to ultras and trails is it's okay to walk yeah. and, and go at like a slower kind of pace, any... especially in the first half. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that would be my number one thing. I think you can use a marathon training plan, just maybe up the distance of your long runs by yep. 10% or something. Cool. Um, and then will there be different designs for men's tank tops? Um, and he was talking about the... Oh, because uh, I was wearing the tank top in the show. Yep. Um, I think I did answer that one, but uh, currently for Run Steep Get High, we've got some new merchandise that we were showing last week. And um, those are kind of the designs we have currently. But once those sell out, we will be making new designs. So we're trying to keep the runs more limited and come out with fresh designs more often. Cool. And someone wants to know how tall you are. Uh, just over six feet tall. There you go. All right. We're going to go over to Instagram, see if we have any questions. Jess and Tonic, what is your best advice for an ultra crew? I'm with the Mustache Running Club in Arkansas. Uh, running crew for Havelina, I would say a lot of people like to bring a pop-up. It's so like a 10 by 10. There's yep. no natural shade out here in the desert. So you're going to be in full sun, especially if it's a hot day. It's going to be it's pretty rough. So if you do have a larger crew... Uh, there's definitely room, and we encourage people to bring shade structures for yeah. yourself, bring some camp chairs, and be prepared to hang out. Uh, you know, bring food and water uh, and ice and all that good stuff. And um, if you could just help us by cleaning up your trash and throwing it away in our dumpster, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, some things to think about is just kind of bring stuff to be self-sufficient, basically. And that and, was a change uh, that we shade. kind of made last year, where it's just kind of this, like, hall of crews and pop-up tents and um yeah there's plenty of space at yep. the headquarters baja runners so start line camping etc is the same as last year correct yes ish <laughs> we're we're making it it's the same parking lot we're just making a slight change to the start line we're probably just going to flip it so 
you'll run past the you'll pa run past and through where the start finish line was last year and then the turnaround will be flip flopped so we'll we'll post a site map as soon as we come up with the change um yep. but it's going to be pretty minor camping should be mostly the same it'll just be slightly modified little and jay never caught you guys live before welcome yay uh, are there showers? Missed them last year. Baja Runner asks, yes. are there showers? So there are showers. They don't currently have a restroom facility in the parking lot we use, but across the road in the competitive track parking lot, they do have a shower that will be open. There's also a secondary shower in the Pemberton trailhead where the race used to take place. Yep. That one will probably have the least amount of traffic. So when you're done with your race, if you want to actually drive up there, it's just about three, three and a half miles up the road mm -hmm. within the park, and there will be showers there that will probably have no one in them. That's all the questions on Instagram. So cool. the 12 of you watching, if you guys have more questions for us, please ask away. Right on. Um, okay, so moving on to Facebook, we've got Lori Hall who says, Yahoo, caught you guys live. Hi, Jam Jam and Jubes. Hello. Hello, Lori. Um, Roger Martin says, anything happening yet can't see anything. <laughs> he must have joined super early. Yes. There are things happening. Um, Chuck Hall says, what's up, kids? Uh, Marisa Jenkins says, yep, they started a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, I go back and forth between ultras and hokas. Lori Hall says, uh, Jubilee, what do you usually run in? Um, I've actually gone back and forth between Solomon's. I've actually... I've, Kind of rotated my shoes a little bit, so I've gone through Solomon's, um, Ultras, and Hoka's. Um, ran my first marathon in Hoka's actually. Nice. So, um, ben Nichols says, "Can the Chris Vargo drink be alcohol free since he doesn't drink?" <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um, and Claudia Cross says, "I want to chase Walmsley." The Virgin Vargo. Hammy Ham says, how many pairs of running shoes do you both currently own? Poof. I probably have, I mean, actually in my closet, I probably have about 10 pairs that are used in various stages. I try and throw them out when they get holes in them, but currently yeah. I'm, I'm milking them for all they're worth because I don't have any new pairs in the lineup. I need to actually have some on order, so. Right on. Yeah. Um, I currently am running in three pairs of shoes. So. Cool. Trying to keep it a little minimalist. Shereen Thompson says, those buffs, what are they? These so, head wraps, these are, are all the participants getting these? So all the participants um, in Javelina will actually get this Javelina head wrap. Um, it so is, this is this year's design. Yep. Which so is we're excited about. All of these little little doodads and knickknacks and things. Yep. Are really fun. So yeah, they'll, everyone will be getting one of these. Yep. They're specific for this year, and uh, they'll also be available for purchase, for purchase at the for expo. cruise and yep. uh, and, and you know, event. thank you gifts for your pacers and all that kind of stuff. For sure. Ryan Beyer says, "Will you guys be able to handle this Texas guy?" <laughs> Bring it on, Ryan. Um, and then, how does this race compare to the Rocky One Hundred? Um, so it's going to have more climbing overall than Rocky Raccoon. And it's going to be hotter and more exposed. We're in the desert versus Rocky Raccoons in the forest. And it's usually, since it's in February, it's usually a lot colder. Yep. Um, but we could get blessed with some nice weather, you know. Which We're would just, be great. It's, it got super, it felt super nice this week. I think it was still like in the 80s. But yeah. for, for us right now, it feels like we're in fall. Yeah. No, it feels <laughs> nice right now. Um, hola, J&J. &J. I hope it doesn't come... I hope it doesn't come to this, but what is the last date to officially drop from the 100 mile to the 100K? Uh, this will be my fourth Havilene 100. Woohoo! Um, and totally sporting the Hoka is probably the Speed Instinct 2s. Awesome. That's a great question. So, and it's a, actually something we'd love to, to cover real quick. Um, in the past, we've had this drop down option mid race where you could drop down to the 100K, still get a 100K finish and a buckle and all this stuff. Yep. Um, you can no longer do that, so you can still drop down up until race morning. Race morning. So, so when you pick up you, your packet. But you have to start with the correct race. So correct. if you are not feeling up to 100 miles, 
come one month from now and you want to go for a 100K finish, you need to drop down to the 100K race and you need to go to our registration tent the yep. morning of the event or at Pack a Pickup and tell them, hey, I'd like to switch my registration into the 100 kilometer race and withdraw from the 100 mile. Yep. You can definitely do that. But you have to do so, you have Wait. to state your intention before, you, before the, gun the gun goes, goes off. off. Yeah. And if you start the 100 mile race, you're in the 100 mile race and you're going for a 100 mile finish. Correct. And if even if you get 80 miles and, and then you're done, you know, it's a DNF. So <laughs> make your decision based yep. upon how you feel and what you think you can do and, and you got to stick with that. Yep. So, so. Packet pickup, 4.30 in the morning. Yep. That is your latest date. But we will have Race a cutoff day. probably very soon for bibs. So if you want that custom bib name and all that stuff, we're ordering those very shortly. We haven't ordered them yet, have we? No, Very close. Yet. No, very close. yeah, we're, we're but, about um, to. Yeah, so if, if you do want to switch now and you know it, we can get you with the correct bib and all that stuff. Cool. Jason Edward Dahl says, make sure you practice constantly kicking rocks while you run. Um, and then Chuck Hall says, Jam Jam, will you have a crew for Barkley this year? Yeah. I don't know who, but yes. Um, Ryan Byers says, what are, asks, what are the temps usually in the day and how much does it drop after dark? This is a great question. Another great question. I mean, last year we saw temperatures in probably the upper, mid to upper 90s, yep. maybe even triple digits on Which some parts of the course. feels, yeah. Yeah. Just with, it, the, with the exposure out there, it's hot. So... Um, and then the drop at night can be drastic. So the desert with how low humidity we have, like it doesn't hold on to the heat. So no. as soon as that sun dips behind the mountains at cold. 530 and if you've been sweating, it can get very cold. So we could, we've seen temperature swings of 50, 60 degrees sometimes where yeah. it's 85 in the day and it's, like an average, it, like yeah. below 40 at night sometimes, yeah. like especially out in the remote parts of the course, you know, we're not in the city, whereas Phoenix with the, all the concrete, it, it holds onto the temps, not out there. It, it just goes, yeah. it goes away. So yeah. average um, swing of like 40 degrees. We will see a lot of people in the medical tent right after sundown because everyone goes from being hot and they sweated everything out and then their clothes are soaked and then they don't have that extra layer and they, you can go hypothermic. It's kind of right. crazy. Yeah. It can be 80, 90 in the day and it, you can just drop, even if it drops to in the fifties, it can feel really cold. Yeah. So. Cool. Oops. Brad Coleman says you both have amazing hair. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> um, Michael Alexander, have you guys considered running in the UK? Bob Graham round. Um, I have not considered it. No. My sights are set on a couple other races right now, the Barkley and. That would be a good question for, yeah. for Miss Haley. She's actually running in the UK a little bit here and there. Um, Shereen Thompson Strafford said, Yay, love those head wraps. Thank you. Michelle Mason says, Thank you for the info. Question for Jam Jam As a race director, have you applied any lessons learned from Laz for your races? Says so Chuckle. Uh, I don't know that I have. <laughs> That's kind of, yeah, that caught me off guard. I don't really know. I don't know what lessons I've learned from Laz. I mean... Just the way he runs a race, or do they vary? I mean, maybe, like, I think Laz would be um, in favor of, like, the not having the old wimp out 100K option, you know? It's mm -hmm. like, state your intentions, run your race. If you finish it, you do. If you don't, then you don't. Um, that's all I got. Okay. Heather Blix, <laughs> uh, if I survive Flagstaff Sky, Sky Race next weekend, I may need to sign up for Havelina or maybe crew someone. Sounds like a good time. LA Sportiva Ultra Raptor for me. Awesome. Cool. That's more on Instagram over here. Yeah, if you guys are local to the Phoenix area, by the way, or just in Arizona, and you are doing, you are looking to kind of maybe participate or volunteer, um, we still have volunteer positions um, for Havelina. And um, if you are looking to pay someone, you are always welcome to come and um, go on the website and actually sign up to be a pacer, and we will match you with uh, a runner who needs a pacer. 
Okay, who designed these sweet buffs? That would be our designer, Sophia, who works here with us. She's amazing. Baja Runner, I have weirdly long arms. Since you guys have gone to a long sleeve, can I upgrade to an XL for sleeve length? I put large down when I signed up. Um, these ones actually kind of do have longer arms. Like this is a medium and it it's kind of nice actually to have one a little longer. If you do want to upgrade, you could email us mm -hmm. and we could switch your registration. So should I email jubilee at arabibarunning.com? Yep. Okay. That's the answer to that one. Elaine Badejo. Hello, Jam and Jubes from Washington. Enjoying your daily videos. My race got canceled due to the fires in Washington, Chris Mount Sky Race. You are inspiring me to get back out there and keep up my vert goal. Awesome. Sorry to hear about that. That really is not fun. Um, but yeah, love that we are inspiring. Right on. Um, Shanna El Jefe says, do volunteers get the same long sleeve for Havelina? So volunteers will actually get a different shirt. Um, I believe we're actually designing those right now. Stay tuned for the volunteer shirt design. Hopefully we'll have those ahead of time yeah. in one of our upcoming hype videos. Yep. What else? Anything else? I think that's all the questions. So, um, yeah. yeah. Again, thank you guys for tuning in and stay tuned for a lot more Trail Talk episodes every week and also a lot more Havelina hype. We are super stoked about this race. A um, couple other housekeeping things. We are coming up on our Flagstaff Sky Race in two weeks. So we Is will it be still two weeks. Oh my gosh. Well, it's a week. It's a week from Saturday. Oh, it's a week so from it's, Saturday. I mean, it's not this weekend. It's a week so and it's a half. Two weeks. Okay. Two weekends away still. So, okay. yeah. Oh. And um, let's see. A couple things we just launched for that is there will be a post race party at Mother Road Beer Yay. and slash PZ Cleta. Uh, if you don't know about that. There's now a Facebook event that we just created on Arab Viper Running Facebook, so check that out. Yep. We'll be starting things at 7 p.m. and going late, so even if you are finishing in that 6, 7, 8 p.m. time period for Flag Sky Race, still come out, start off your night. It's super fun hanging out in downtown Flagstaff. Thank you. So come celebrate your finish and hang out. Looks like we got another question over here. Oh, question from Marcus Tufo. Um, during a ton of elevation and prep for Barkley, um, I get it, but it seems like the GPS navigation is crucial skill to complete the loops. Are you doing anything to improve your navigational skills? Uh, as I recall, in the years past, you simply couldn't find pages and would get lost. Wow. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, uh, GPS is not allowed. Maybe that's, I don't know. Like the orienteering bit yeah. of, of Barkley. GPS definitely not allowed. I mean, I don't know what more I can do when it comes to that. I think the biggest thing for me, yeah, you're always going to have the chance of getting lost. I, I have more loops under my belt each year, which is helpful. Um, for me, the biggest variable I could control personally is my training and, and my fitness and the more fit you are, the faster you can get around the loop. And I mean, I know a lot of the loop, but the course also changes every year. So there's always yeah. unknowns and variables. You know, the nighttime stuff, the fog stuff, that's what all Barkley people have to deal with. And that's why it's so hard. And that's why there's only 15 finishers. So um, I don't know what else I can do for that other than just get in really good shape. I've shown up not in great shape most other years, so. But getting lost is all part of it, I think. So, all right. All right. Thank, you, Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Take see care. See you. Bye.